Good evening and welcome to this Cape Shepherd Cup Round 3 fixture between Dunedin Technical and Otago University coming to you from Logan Park in Dunedin. My name's Morgan Jarvis, I'm excited to be commentating the match today. It's a chilly night here but uh, otherwise pretty good conditions for football. Dunedin Technical, they've been the dominant force in local football in recent years. Winners of the inaugural 2018 Kate Shepherd Cup and they're coming up against Otago University who have been in good form had a few wins on the trot in the league and uh, in second place behind uh, Dunedin Technical. So looking forward to a good game of football tonight. I caught up with the coaches to have a chat. Craig, Dunedin Technical coach, been in dominant form again locally in the league this year. And uh, you've made no secret really, um, your squad, of repeating your heroics from 2018. So you've got to be really excited for this clash here tonight against uni. Yeah, thanks Morgan. Um, yeah, we've come into it uh, pretty well the last couple of weeks. Uh, we had a couple of really tough games um, locally. Um, a lot of sides are now setting up really defensively and we've got to work out ways to, uh, to obviously attack that. Um, but no, really happy with the squad that we've got out there tonight and, and um, yeah, we really want to go quite deep in this Kate Shepherd and, and hey, we've got to come out of this local, this local part of it and then hopefully move into the next. Yeah, and uh, it was a really good clash against Green Island where they uh, certainly pushed you really hard. Um, that'll just be reminding you that you certainly can't take anything for granted because uh, you're the team with the target on your back. Yeah, look, we had about 80% of position. They didn't have a shot on goal, but uh, they were quite happy to get the uh, the numbers behind the ball. But, um, you know, we've got to, we've got to um, react to that and, and, as I said, like look look at different ways to, to, to beat that sort of uh, set-up. So. And uh, you look like you've got pretty much a full-strength uh, squad available tonight, which uh, I'm sure the, the opposition will see the, the depth that you've got there, and it's uh, pretty scary stuff. Yeah, it is. Look, we've got Katie Fawkes away uh, this weekend, but uh, other than that, we are at full strength, which is... Uh, really pleasing particularly this part of the year. Great and just finally uh, playing here on the turf uh, well both yourself and uni essentially call this ground home uh, but uh, it's, it's uh, got to be uh, getting you excited for playing good quality football here tonight. Yeah look our home is Culling Park the Champagne Turf and it, it's definitely not the Champagne Turf but um, but you know this facility is fantastic playing Friday night with uh, you know a lot of a lot of our supporters here as well really makes it for us and and uh, look it's just fantastic and, and look we, we, we grow another leg on this turf and and um, yeah we just play a lot a lot better style of football and, and look girls just can't wait to get out there tonight and, and they're pretty pumped for it so yeah it's going to be good. Great thanks Craig all the best. So we've just kicked off here at Logan Park Dunedin Technical in their red kit and Otago University in the gold and blue playing from right to left. Very uh, chilly conditions here at Logan Park this evening but uh, no breeze to speak of at the moment. The rain's staying away after a lot of rain in recent days so good conditions really for football and Dunedin Technical looking to string some passes together here and it's pushed out to the left wing side and that looks like Margie Diaz who's electric on the ball but uh, it'll be a goal kick here for Otago University so I'm not sure that uh, we've got a chance there to, to run through the, the lineups for you but uh, in goals here for Otago University is Amelia Simmers. I think the youngest starter in the lineup for uni today. She sends it down the right side of the pitch there. And number 12 for Dunedin Tech there, Hannah Mackay Wright, plays it back to Lauren Patterson, her goalkeeper. We have two teams here who love to play good football on the deck. Had a long range effort there from Megan O'Malley for University. Doesn't trouble the goalkeeper for Dunedin Tech, but early sight of an on goal there. Emily Morrison with a fantastic touch there, and she plays it through to Diaz, and she'll use her pace to try and get onto that. And nicely cut out by the university defenders there. Rose Morton for Tech, mopping up.
both teams will be happy to be patient on the ball. And University come away with it and it's the captain O'Malley now. A throw and foot a need and take over that side. Probably a wee bit hard to see the, the the crowd up on the embankment there behind the lights, but nice crowd filtering in. Sure, Dunedin Technical will have a few of the uh, uh, loyal supporters in there that we'll, we'll hear throughout the game. While well, uh, University, well, they've, the, the team's been decimated a little bit by injuries, by exams and by uh, some players out of town. So a uh, little bit thin on depth today, but got some talented players here and they've started quite uh, positively here which is good to see as well Chelsea Whitaker on the ball for Tech Beth Elliott in the seven shirt there for University doing a good job of uh, forcing her to play back O'Malley cutting out the pass there and Beth Elliott now laying it all the way back to Tony Power. And Laura Anderson Chisholm there sending it forward. Neve Collin gets the ball in a bit of space and a nice turn and finds Chelsea Whitaker again looking up to try and find Diaz. And University there, well, Pia Davis, I think that was, that was uh, looking to try and find one of her attackers there, but Chelsea Whitaker back on the ball for Tech and no players making the right runs there. have an incredible record over recent years. Yes, they won the National uh, Kate Shepherd Cup just a couple of years ago in brilliant fashion, but even in the in the local league, well over 100 games unbeaten, eight consecutive league titles. At University are one of the teams that's uh, pushing them hard over the last couple of years. Emily Morrison dropping deep and finds Chantelle Smith and back to Morrison and she takes on the defenders. Plays a nice ball through there but uh, Neve Collin couldn't quite get on the end of it so it'll be a goal kick for University. University have been in good form of late. I think four wins on the trot in the League and Cup for them. Here's Dunedin Tech. Look to push forward now. Chantal Smith plays it through for Chelsea Whitaker. She again is looking for Diaz and just about will keep that in but not quite. There's uh, quite a heavy dew on the pitch now just uh, with, the, with the clear but chilly conditions you'll certainly see uh, a bit of steam blowing from the, from, the, from the players and the cold temperatures here tonight but uh, it might also mean that the ball will just be zipping along the turf more than ever. Chantal Smith who just uh, forms such a good midfield duo with Chelsea Whitaker but University have done a good job of fighting back here. Megan O'Malley sees that one safely out for a tech throw in. Throw in will be taken by uh, Kelsey Kennard. One of the, the stars of that team from 2018 that won the 
Cat Shepherd Cup final up in Auckland. It's a small delay as there's another ball on the pitch, but Canard will get the game underway again. Ruby Anderson can't get past O'Malley. It'll be easily mopped up by the uni keeper, Amelia Simmers. And she goes long. University push on down that right flank. Diaz all the way back doing some defending. Both teams have obviously had a, a couple of wins in the opening couple of rounds of the of the Cape Shepherd Cup. Dunedin Tech. Well, they started off with a big 9-0 win over Osmai Carey here on the turf. And uh, round two was a closer affair, 3-2 win over Green Island out at Sunnyvale. While uh, University have had a couple of big wins so far, beating uh, Southland United 7-0 in the opening round and then Mosgiel 8-0 in round two. Is Uni get the first uh, good set piece chance of the match here with a, a corner that will be swung in? Tech get the clearing header and before it's sent back in, and Patterson can't quite deal with it for Tech. And the shot comes in and the save's made by Patterson, so good pressure here from University. Tech will look to clear now and look to turn it into a counter-attack as well. Neve Collin holding the ball up. Nice and patient on the ball. Chelsea Whitaker spray uh, now on the ball. She looks up and Diaz had come centrally there. But so far, Uni have been uh, marking very tightly and not giving Tech any room. Diaz now on the ball again. <laughs> and a late challenge comes in there. And Ruby Anderson will see the ball uh, just beat her over the dead ball line there. So another goal kick for University. O'Malley chips it forward, but Canard now finds Whitaker. It's a bit of movement, and Chantel Smith just about getting onto that, but well defended Ruby Anderson now. And O'Malley again happy just to see the ball out. Chantel Smith there in the seven shirt for Dunedin Tech. Certainly a star for this team and for Southern United in the in the National League and of course won the Maya Jackman Trophy for being named player of the final in that 2018 Kate Shepherd Cup win where she was superb up against uh, players that had represented their country and she was uh, the comfortably the best player on the on the park. Dunedin Tech will have a throw in here. Will they flank Talia Room, I think, to take that? Well, 
And some live wire play there from Chelsea Whitaker. And Tech back on the ball now through Diaz, but Uni with uh, good, good hustle so far, but Tech once again pushing forward. Kelsey Kennard does well to cut that one out and she finds Morrison and looking to play a clever ball through there to Neve Collin but again nicely cut out. Tony Power I think there for University doing some good defensive work. These uh, teams have had a couple of meetings in the in the local uh, Football South Southern Premiership, including an opening round one fixture quite a few weeks back now, and Tech came away with a good 6-1 one win in that game. Margie Diaz and Neve Collin getting a couple of goals each, and played each other last month as well, and Tech came away with a 4-0 win then. So... Uh, yeah, University certainly underdogs coming into this, especially missing a few key players for this match, but they'll be pretty pleased with how they've started and kept it scoreless so far. Ruby Anderson now one-on-one -on -one with Megan O'Malley, but O'Malley just about pushes her wide enough, but Anderson's cross then cut out. Tony Power's certainly been busy back there for uni. She knows uh, a number of these tech players particularly well through the Southern United National League side. Amongst the numerous players missing for uni is uh, well, Amy Hislop, star striker, last year's uh, golden boot in the premiership down here. So they do miss her up and attack as Tech push forward and they're going to get a chance here and Morrison's shot was blocked off the line and some desperate defending there from University to keep Tech scoreless as Chantal Smith looks to get another attack going here for Tech a long range effort comes in from Chelsea Whitaker and I'm not sure the initial shot crossed the line but bounced back and I think that's Neve Collin there, who was on hand, put it in, and, well, Tech, 1-0 up. So opening goal there for Dunedin Tech, after Uni had been making a pretty good account for themselves, really, but uh, Tech, they certainly know how to punish teams, and... He'll be pleased to have taken the lead. Chantal Smith and Tony Power going head to head there. Smith happy just to knock it back to Kennard. Rose Morton with a lovely one touch pass out to Talia Room. And Chelsea Whitaker again on the ball. Ball goes all the way back to Patterson, the goalkeeper. University uh, playing with quite a high defensive line here, which it's good to see. They're going to try and put the squeeze on Tech. So Patterson sends it long, and there's no pressure on Megan O'Malley, but her header goes back towards her own goal, and Uni have to mop up. 
Tony Power a nice turn on the ball and looks up trying to see what options she has in front of her. Nuni have certainly got numbers forward but decides to play it out to the full back. Nuni do nicely here and again they've got some players forward. O'Malley can't find a teammate though and Ruby Anderson is, looks and finds Chantel Smith down the right flank in a lot of space but great defending there from Tony Power. She's been everywhere so far and that was a crucial challenge. Another throw in here for Dunedin Tech. University with numbers there to try and clear. It only comes back to Kennard though, and she lays it back to Chantel Smith. She fires it in towards the far post, but that's pretty easy for Simmers to deal with. She thumps it long. Hannah Mackay Wright doing a nice job there. Very cold conditions here now down at Logan Park. My hands are, are shaking. It's uh, very chilly, but doesn't seem to be uh, impacting the, the, the players. They're putting on a good display so far. Canard back to Smith. You can hear the call of patience, patience, and just looking to try and break down the uni team here. And Emily Morrison now lays it back to Chelsea Whitaker, who loves to have a crack from distance, and that doesn't trouble the goal, but she's scored plenty of goals in the league this season, many of them from that sort of distance. Tim is happy to play it short to O'Malley, but great pressure there from Chantel Smith. Smith on the ball again. Back to Rose Morton. Sends it long, and Ruby Anderson trying to get on the end of it, but well dealt with by Uni again. and uni battling hard there Lizzie Ellis couldn't quite one out and O'Malley does well to intercept that one and finds a teammate and and it's been tucked through here and there's only some good defending there from Dunedin Tech that prevented uh, getting a side at goal there and Smith now pushing forward and has Ruby Anderson outside her in a bit of space and She'll look up and see a few teammates getting into the box there. But uh, took her time and was well shut down. Anderson again on the ball. Tricky wee turn. But has to go all the way back to Kelsey Kennard as Uni did a good job of shutting down the options. Nicely cut out again by Tony Power. So in case you missed it earlier, Dunedin Tech taking a goal, uh, one goal lead after about a quarter of an hour. Haven't been too many chances on goal though so far. Uh, nicely cut out there by, by Room and a little bit of indecision almost there between the Tech defenders and there's some uh, really good hustle there from Jess Marvin in the 18 shirt for University who has uh, been praised by the uni coach Stu Moffat for stepping up in recent weeks. 
in a long range effort coming in on goal there, but straight at the tip keeper, Lauren Patterson. But these conditions where it's going to be pretty slippery with the with the dirt's going to be tricky for keepers. The ball will be skidding off the turf, so uh, I'm sure both teams will take those chances to have cracks at goal like that. Smith and once again sees Anderson in a lot of space down this flank and she takes on power and just about goes past her but good defending there again from Uni. Rose Morden and Smith there and Morton now from the edge of the box and powerful shot but only just over the crossbar. Rose Morden in the in the two shirt there for, for Tech, generally sort of mopping up in that defensive midfield kind of area, but uh, got herself forward there and uh, just about got herself on the score sheet. Chantel Smith getting plenty of touches for Tech in the middle of the park. goes back to Hannah Mackay right but pretty good pressing there from the University who trying to shut down those triangles from Tech. Rudy Anderson a bit deeper down it's uh, Morton again who's firing forward but uh, will only be a throw in here for Tech. out again to take the throw in. Yeah. Emily Morrison jockeying on the ball and so it might be a throw rather than a corner there. Need and Tech have uh, certainly as a uh, get an effort here on goal and it's just about to say that they've scored plenty of goals in the league from, from corners and, and set pieces this year. They've got some some of their defenders uh, um, big goal threat says Tiaz thunders a shot at goal and it's a great save by Simmers there to tip it over. It will be a corner now for Dunedin Tech. This is where you'll see the likes of Hannah Mackay Wright. Kelsey Kennard will be getting themselves up there in the six yard box. And it comes in right, and that's exactly where it is. And Hannah Mackay Wright got it in. Uni managed to scramble it clear, but once again, Tech going close. Kelsey mops up there and Whitaker with a, a clever touch to get away from Jess Marvin and Rose Morton then all the way back to her goalkeeper. Well, this is uh, nicely done by Marvin, I think it is, and Jess Marvin still on the ball, tries to open up for a shot and it might just about fall for a teammate here and Pia Davis there. It was a, just a bit awkward for her. Got a shot away, didn't threaten the goal, but Uni have managed to get a few shots away already, so there's plenty of encouragement here for them, despite being a goal down. Neve Collin, and a bit of space winning that, and, well, see exactly what she's trying to do and sending it out to Mark Diaz, but Simmons was, was alert and was at the edge of her box. It's Davis. Flicks it on for Marvin. And good challenges in there, but Rose Morden so calm and does nicely to find Ruby Anderson. She's again trying to find Diaz, but 
well dealt with by Uni. Throwing comes in down that right flank. Uni with a very ambitious long range effort there that just see a goal kick for Dunedin Tech. It's played out short to Mackay Wright. She looks up again. Jess Marvin there doing a good job of closing her down and not giving any easy passing options and Patterson has to go long and Davis wins the ball but just couldn't quite get the, the touch that she wanted. Now Chantal Smith just gets onto it and Diaz in a bit of space and she loves having space like that and taking players on. Looks for a clever ball across to Morrison. And got a wee toe poke shot away there but easy for Simmers. Uh, Chelsea Whitaker there putting pressure on her opponent and Beth Elias and now Whitaker again tries to dribble her way through into the box but couldn't quite keep the ball under control there. Brilliant uh, facility here at the, the Logan Park turf. Only a couple of years old and uh, just the kind of facility that Dunedin had been crying out for uh, given the, the state of most of the fields around town at the moment with all the rain that we've had this week. A lot of grounds uh, would be pretty much out of action so it's great that uh, got a got a surface like this here at the, at the Logan Park turf that so conducive to, to good footy and it suits the way both teams like to play. So we just get a wee stoppage and, and play here but I think we'll get back underway and referee Alice Clipson with the drop ball. I think in the in the rush to come to air I might have missed just mentioning the officials which uh, yeah Alice Clipson with the whistle in the middle we've got Caleb Marsh and Sarah Stephen on the um, assistant duties today. As Whitaker gets it back from Neve Collin. Diaz just dropping back there to give herself some space and <laughs> lays it back now. Chelsea Whitaker finds Diaz in another shot poked in on goal there once again pretty straightforward for Simmers launches it long and Davis here looks up and trying to spark something in attack for Uni University here again, just the, the bounce goes their way and can't quite get a cross in towards goal there. University again now, trying to play positively, they've got some players forward there. But they're just going to have to be so alert to the, to the counter attack, attack with the, the pace of some of these tech players in attack. Colin can't get on the end of that one, so it's easy for Simmers. As Diaz now wins out with that one and takes on a player, goes towards the byline and oh, beats a challenge, tucks it across to Morrison. And now Neve Colin, the ball just won't quite sit, but if it on goal comes in from Whitaker, it's blocked a couple of times. Good scrambling there from Uni. And 
And now Uni will again push forward. Nicely cut out there by Hannah Mackay Wright. Ball comes all the way back to Patterson. But Uni here again, doing some good pressing, so not making things easy for, for Tech at the back there. Morton calmly mops up. There's Tech attack down that left flank. Well cut out again by the University Defence and now yeah, a little bit of time, Cara Dace doing a nice job there and Morton just managed to block the first effort there but now a long range shot comes in and Patterson will be relieved that it, again it was straight at her and fairly comfortable but Uni with another effort on goal there. Canard to Smith, who just lay it back to Canard again. She didn't have too many short options, so had to go long and nicely done there by Lizzie Ellis. And Uni string together a couple of passes on the edge of the box and a bit of a tussle on the ball there. And wow, I think Talia rounded just enough there to uh, fend off the university attacker but that was again some encouraging play from university it's Morrison flicks it off and Tech starting to get numbers forward but <laughs> Whitaker pretty frustrated there that she uh, just lost control of the ball when she was trying to decide which option she was going to take Anderson dropping back and Smith goes charging forward and it's Morrison who then finds Smith and strokes it back to Morton. Kelsey Kennard might swing in across. No, she goes short for Morrison but Uni will manage to clear it. Chantel Smith as well but Uni now Turning on the ball, Jasmine Prince. I think despite being a goal down, I think uh, Stu Moffat, the, the uni coach, will be pretty pretty pleased with how his team's competing here. We know they're, they're light on numbers. They're missing quite a few regular first-teamers. They're uh, doing a pretty good job of competing so far this evening. Uh, around the middle of the park there, have to go back to room and then Morton just patiently playing it around the back but once again University aren't just sitting back there putting a bit of pressure on still playing with a fairly high defensive line here as well so um, that's compressing things but it's situations like this where Tech are looking to get players forward and it ball just about falls there for Chelsea Whitaker and and it's a penalty awarded there. Well that's really unfortunate for for, for Simmers. Um, one on one there with, with Whitaker. And unfortunately as Whitaker tried to knock it around, Simmers, um, the university goalkeeper, has taken out Whitaker and the referee had no choice there but to award a penalty. So just when university were starting to get a little bit of a hold back on the match, 
Tech have a chance to double the, the scoreline, it will be Whitaker herself who will take this and she scored plenty from the penalty spot. And just rolls it in calmly, sends uh, Simmers the, the wrong way. And doubles the lead for Dunedin Tech, that's 2-0 now. So, Tech 2-0 up over Otago U University in this round three fixture of the Kate Shepherd Cup Football Foundation. Kate Shepherd Cup, this is the, the first match of the, of the round. I think there's one other match this evening and a few other matches across the country over the weekend. Brilliant to be able to be... Uh, helping bring this, uh, this broadcast to people across the country, around the world even. There's Tech, they won't let up. Morrison sends it across to Ruby Anderson who beats her marker, but great defending there. Might have been Tony Power again. A great job of shutting down Anderson, but Smith wins it back, sends it a big cross, and the diminutive Diaz couldn't quite get on the end of it. But dangerous cross there from Chantel Smith. Ball falls here for Tech, and a great effort on goal. And what a rocket! I think that was Neve Collin from almost the, the the corner of the of the penalty box turned and hammered it. And I don't think Simmers had any chance there as the ball thundered in off the crossbar. Fantastic strike! I was just about to say that with uh, only around six minutes to go in the in the half that. University would just love to get through to half time a couple of goals down, but wow, 3 0 now. And what a strike that was. Megan O'Malley looks to find Davis, but cut out by Talia Room. She brings the ball forward. Diaz again dazzling on the ball. Just lays it across though, but well cut out by Uni. Rose Morden will play it back to Hannah Mackay Wright and she's happy to send it across to Kelsey Kennard in a bit of space and Ruby Anderson again here unmarked down the right hand flank but instead goes to Chantel Smith. Emily Morrison coming forward from deep and ball just about fell to her as well and now she fights back and gets in, gets a shot away straight at Simmers in goal though. But this Dunedin Tech team, well they're, they're unrelenting and doesn't matter if uh, if they've gone one or two or three goals up, they'll just keep coming at you. They'll never let up. Anderson back to Kennard. Rose Morden turning and just playing it across to Talia Room. Nice patient play again. And Whitaker turns and brings it forward. Still on the ball there and just squeezing through players. Brilliant play from Chelsea Whitaker and Chantel Smith goes for the cross that's well claimed by Simmers. Smith might be uh, thinking she could have had a, had a crack at goal and gee, she can uh, certainly hit a thunderbolt of a shot as well so I'm sure we'll see that at some point in the match. It's tech advance again through Talia Room. Finds Neve Collin, turns, finds, I think that's Room still advancing on her run and lays it across and, well, could have been an awkward one there for the University defence and Megan O'Malley, it's one of those ones where it could have, uh, could have almost ended up in her own goal but she did well just to uh, calmly uh, touch it back and her goalkeeper was able to claim.
as we near half time here. Dunedin Technical 3 0 up over Otago University in this round three Kate Shepherd Cup fixture. Coming all the way from the deep south in Dunedin, the very chilly deep south at the moment. Certainly not getting any warmer as the evening goes on. Oh, Uni just about managed to get an intercept there, but instead it's Kennard driving forward. Finds Smith. There she is with that long-range shot I was talking about, and Cannon's against the crossbar. Not far away there from getting a fourth for her tech side. Don't think Summers had much chance with that either. It was just uh, dipping in, but not quite quickly enough as it bounced back off the bar. Nicely cut out there. University, can they get a goal back before half time? They'd love to. Diaz flicks it across. So Chelsea Whitaker, I think you you will have to excuse any play down that very far side of the field. It's a little bit hard to make out. Um, exactly who's on the ball. It's a little bit glary and we've got a bit of uh, bit of steam coming off the pitch as well. I'm I'm just standing pitch side um, over on the camera side of the field. So it's a little bit hard to make out the, the action all the way over the year, but I think that's Whitaker is uh, happy to go all the way back there to Mackay Wright and then to the goalkeeper Patterson and there is the half time whistle from Alice Clipsom half time in this round 3 Kate Shepherd Cup fixture Dunedin Tech um, have been pretty impressive and now 3-0 up um, you'll have to excuse I think at the beginning of the match uh, we were a wee bit rushed with some of the other footage so we have um, a pre-match interview from the coach of I think the Otago University team is the, is the one that you'll be seeing here so um, Stu Moffat's comments before the match so with uh, University coach Stu Moffat got to be excited for a Friday night Kate Shepherd Cup clash under lights against well the best team in town Dunedin Tech it's uh, got to be exciting for the girls yeah, it's, it's really exciting for the girls. They've um, shown a lot, a lot of resilience in the last few uh, weeks uh, with exams, it's university side. So there's exams, there's uh, students, some students off tonight who can't make it uh, because of that reason. Um, and there's a few off with injury as well. So um, the team are excited. Um, we're drawing on our, our bare bones to, to get a squad together, but um, hey, that's cup football. Yeah, I was just talking to Craig from Tech and uh, d talking about how much depth they've got. And unfortunately, with the, with the players out, and missing some key players like Amy Hislop and quite a few other regulars, but we have seen some players step up for your team in recent weeks, and um, surely that's got to give you a wee bit of wee bit of hope there. We've got a wee bit of hope there. Jess Marvin certainly has stepped up into the uh, into the breach. Uh, she's a really, really hard-working player. Uh, she works hard for her teammates. Um, she creates opportunities and chances for herself and, and the players around her. So um, yes, we are hoping a little bit uh, that she'll come and perform for us tonight. Great. And uh, Dunedin Technical, well, they, they always seem to start matches really strongly, often get on the score sheet really early. Is that something that you're going to be looking to, to try and nullify? Uh, we're going to look for, not try and nullify them scoring any goals at all. Um, but, uh, so far this season, they've scored goals um, throughout the different periods of the game. So they've, they've actually been quite strong in and around the half-time area as well, I think, as well. So, um, yeah, I don't look at my clock and think we have to be really resilient now. I think uh, for the whole game, we have to be really careful and try and try our best to have a real do not concede attitude throughout the whole game. Cup games are different in, in the way, that way to league games because it's more important not to lose a cup game than it, than it is to actually go out and, and try and win um, because you've got extra time and penalties, etc. So it's even more important this time that we don't try and concede early, you're correct, but also throughout the whole game. Brilliant. Look, all the best, Stu. Um, hope the game goes well. Uh, one of the pre-match interviews there with the coach from the Otago University team, Stu Moffat. 
This team are three 0 down at the at the break here. We'll run through the the team list that I think we missed at the start of the game as well. So Dunedin Technical, if we run through their lineup, Lauren Patterson and goals had a couple of saves to make and has seen a couple of efforts uh, just fly past a goal. We've got Rose Morton who's been really busy, Kelsey Kennard, Talia Room, Chantel Smith has been very busy in the middle of the park. Margie Diaz, Neve Collin scored a fantastic goal. Chelsea Whitaker been buzzing all around the pitch as well. Hannah Mackay Wright, and a couple of attackers, Ruby Anderson and Emily Morrison there. And there's some exciting players on the bench for Dunedin Tech that I'm sure we'll see at some point in this half as well. And if we look at the Otago University. Line-up here, Amelia Simmers has had a wee bit to do in, in, in goals. Cara Daish, Megan O'Malley in the, in the three shirt has been impressive. Laura Anderson Chisholm, Beth Elliott, Tony Power in the nine shirt for University has been absolutely everywhere. Jasmine Prince, Meg Cray, Lizzie Ellis, Pia Davis, and striker Jess Marvin. So they're the, the lineups for this match. Half time here at Logan Park. We'll be back in a few minutes with the second half action. We'll see you soon.
Welcome back to this Kate Shepherd Cup Round 3 fixture from Logan Park in Dunedin between Dunedin Tech and Otago University. Second half about to get underway. Dunedin Tech leading 3-0 over uni. Dunedin Tech in their maroon shirt and in, in white shirt, uh, shorts. They've been pretty impressive and deserve to lead, uh, but University have put up a pretty good account for themselves and will be a wee bit disappointed to be three goals down at the break. So it'll be interesting to see how the start of the second half here unfolds. I think Tech will just keep uh, going for the jugular, but if, if Uni can pull a goal back, then it could make the rest of the game, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting. If you have only just tuned in, very chilly conditions down here. Almost freezing conditions at Logan Park, but no breeze, no rain, so we don't mind. As uh, University here in their gold shirts get the second half underway. One thing that we will find here in the second half is the strength of the Dunedin Tech squad with some of the talent they've got on the bench, whereas University at the moment rather short on, on players, missing a few of their first team regulars and a little bit short on just on numbers really on the, on the bench. They might only have two players on, on the bench so and one of them might even be a goalkeeper. So that will no doubt factor into play as Tech. Chelsea Whitaker pushes it on to Diaz who, well, decided to try and cut back rather than take on her marker, but Talia Room now to cross it in and well dealt with by Tony Power for Uni. And it's nice to see, rather than just thumping it clear, she looked up, tried to find her teammate there in Jasmine Prince, but Tech pushed forward again. Ruby Anderson, well shut down. Really good defending there from uh, from University, but it'll be a corner for Dunedin Tech. Chantel Smith, who went close to scoring a, a cracker late in that first half when she hit the crossbar. And uh, they went close with a corner in the first half as well that Smith sent in. Look for Hannah Mackay Wright in the 12 shirt to maybe get on the end of this, and she does. Can't get her effort on target. She was moving away from goal, so it wasn't easy. And Uni will be relieved to have a goal kick. Simmers. The goal kick and Chantel Smith on the ball, but nicely cut out there by Beth Elliott. Tech again happy to just knock it around at the back before they push forward and that's when they get numbers and you can see Ruby Anderson on the ball but Diaz was in a lot of space out this left hand flank just wasn't seen by a teammate and instead it's it's Uni on the ball Diaz having to do some defending as Meg Cray tries to go past her Now, Neve Collin, who scored a couple of goals in that opening half and sends it across to attacking colleague Morrison and all the way out to Ruby Anderson. Chantel Smith fires it in and Collin couldn't get her head on the end of it but it fell to the feet of Marky Tiaz and I think she was just a bit surprised by that. Just a few yards out from goal but couldn't get a shot away. Relief there for University. Neve Collin with two of Tech's goals in the first half. First one was uh, the opening goal, just mopping up after a um, rebound came back to her. But, geez, her second goal when she 
turned and hammered it. It was a great strike. The other goal scorer, Chelsea Whitaker, scoring from the penalty spot after she had been brought down by the uni keeper, Amelia Simmers. The ball goes all the way back to Tech's goalkeeper there, Lauren Patterson, but safely gets it forward. Kelsey Kennard. And clever play there by Morrison and Chantel Smith now back to Morrison, driving towards goal, but great defending from Uni there. Really brave defending, cut her out. This university come down this right flank, and Davis can't quite get on to the end of it as Talia Aroon cuts it out, and now she sends Diaz clear one-on-one, -on -one and she beats her. Marker is she's so good in these situations, looks up. What will she do? She cuts it across. But Tony Pierre does well to cut it out. Room getting all the way forward, but Power again cuts it out. And Mackay Wright shut down there by Beth Elliott. Talia Room swings it towards the far post and the falls to Morrison. Just couldn't quite get a shot away. But now Neve Collin gets on oh, again. Absolutely thumps it. Went for power. Just over the crossbar. Diaz wins the head of the year, but the university try and string an attack together. Jasmine Prince with a nice turn and here she is again, but Hannah Mackay right, nice calm defending. Pia Davis was looking like she was getting into a dangerous spot up an attack there as well. Not sure if you can hear my teeth chattering, it is that cold here on the sideline. Neve Collin can't quite get on the end of that through ball. Uni playing with a bit of confidence here. Uh, just well dealt with again that time by Talia Room, but ball still in play. And a turn there from Uni, but just pops very nicely into the hands of Patterson and goals for Tech. Chantal Smith turns and sends it forward. Anderson trying to get on the end of it. Can't do so though. But Smith unrelenting, just driving forward. But Uni trying to do the same. Really enjoying this battle between these teams. Even Tech three goals up, but um, it's been a really good competitive game of football so far. Megan O'Malley and has it cut out and Chantel Smith there diving in but safely back for the university defence now to try and build another attack. Done well to find might have been Beth Elliott in the middle of the park there and the ball comes out now to Meg Cray in the 14 shirt. She takes on Diaz and that ball's been cut out though, and Chantel Smith, look at that acceleration. Had Diaz coming down the left flank there, couldn't quite find her. It had been nicely cut out by Laura Anderson Chisholm, but Diaz now will keep that ball in. He looks up. Couldn't get it to a teammate though, Rose Morton now. Spreads it out to... Ruby Anderson, I think that is out the right hand side, and she drives towards the byline. Gets her marker, cuts it back, and Neve Collin, but cleared off the line. Oh, 
Could have been a chance for Neve to complete a hat trick there. But the score will stay 3 0. And that's what Tech do so well. Just again, when University looked to build a bit of possession and a couple of attacks and that, but then Tech just uh, create these chances. And here's Smith again driving forward. Lays it out to Anderson. Crossed in as a great ball, too. Morrison couldn't quite get a, a shot away. It ended up being a, a goal kick. She was tightly marked again. Uni have done a great job of in the uh, those those centrally based tech attackers have uh, generally had one or two uni players very close by. This Rose Morden once again so good with the, the one touch pass. University have, have been in good form in, in recent weeks, have picked up some, some good wins, including a 4-2 win over Osamai Carey. 3-0 win over, over Mosgill, who they beat in round two of the Cape Shepherd Cup a couple of weeks back as well. And as we mentioned in the first half, they're missing a raft of first-team regulars in tonight's match. Uh, Amy Hislop, who's a goal-scoring machine for them. Lena Durand, Tyler Wood, Joyce O'Brien. There's a big list of players that are unavailable, so um, really getting uh, challenged with the depth and that of the of the squad at uni. But they're making a really good account for themselves tonight, despite the scoreline so far. Emily Morrison's dropped deep but can't find Colin and it's cleared. It's again, all cleared and Might be uh, Chantel Smith maybe firing it in, and well, that's good hands from Amelia Simmers, and she's done really well to hold that too because it's a really heavy, heavy dew on the field on the ball. The the ball be pretty slippery, so she did well to hold that. Great work there from Uni, shutting down Chelsea Whitaker, not giving her any time. Beth Elliott did nicely there, and now. Jasmine Prince was putting the pressure on too. So they're, they're still pressing hard here. It's good to see. Not making it easy for Tech, but Tech. We'll work it out. Whitaker to Morrison. Flicks it across, but can't find Neve. Colin. Beth Elliott again on the ball. And gets a great run from her teammate here in Meg Cray. But she can't quite find Pia Davis. And Kennard cuts it out. Morrison, oh Diaz always a willing runner and clever ball through here for Neve Collin, gets in behind the defence, she's pushed wide though, cuts back, what's she going to do, lays it across, Morrison the ball falls nicely for her and brilliant save there from Simmers to deny Emily Morrison who, whose eyes would have lit up the ball, just dropped nicely at her feet, five yards out but Really brave goalkeeping from, from Simmers, who I think I mentioned in the first half, I think she's the, the youngest starter for this uh, university side. That was really brave goalkeeping. She's uh, previously played for Central Football in the National League. Impressive goalkeeping. But it will be a corner for Dunedin Tech. 
once again. There's some big targets in there. We'll be looking to get on the end of it. This one, it's uh, not as deep though, but jeez. It fell to Emily Morrison, I think it was, on the, on the half volley and smashed it just a couple of metres wide of goal. It's a bit of a change up from the, the regular routine, but just about came to fruition for Tech. Canard on the ball for Tech. Nice ball through to Whitaker, but in, uh, you don't see a heavy touch like that too often from Chelsea Whitaker. She's allowed one every now and then, I guess. But the university now looking to pounce, and it's Pia Davis who's been busy and impressive and looks up. Couldn't quite find a teammate though. They're still keeping the pressure on here though. Beth Elliott just loses out to Chelsea Whitaker. Once again, good contest there on the ball. That might have been Lizzie Ellis who did well to deny her opponent and she now sends it wide but I think she's expecting a wee bit too much of Meg Cray to get on the end of that one. But they might be able to box in Dunedin and Tech who have a throw in here near their own corner. They make it a wee bit easy for Whitaker there to, to turn and find Diaz. And she does nicely to find the feet of Neve Collin. <laughs> Diaz was screaming for it. And she's still in a bit of space here. And But Whitaker goes the other way. Finds Ruby Anderson down that right flank. But again, Simmers is alert to it. Did well to cut it out easily in the end. Chantel Smith always nipping at the heels. But does fall the way of, of uni. And Pia Davis now, just a oh, slightly heavy touch there. She had a chance to turn and Cray was making a good overlapping run. Simmers sends it very long here. Evades a couple of players before it's dealt with. Chantal Smith turns and immediately looks to turn it into an attack. And you'll have to excuse the fact that uh, looks like I've missed a substitution. Might have even been at, at half time, but I, I think that Tabitha Seaton has come on for Dunedin Tech from off off the bench. Pretty sure I saw the, the nine shirt. As I mentioned in the first half, it's a little bit tricky for me to, to make out that far side of the field with the uh, glare of the lights and the, and the steam coming off the pitch. Um, Pia Davis now for University. Nice turn and drives forward and a shot comes in there. It's only just wide of goal. Well, Lauren Patterson looked like she knew that it was always going wide, but it wasn't too far away. Diaz drops deep to get the ball from Canard and does a dinky wee turn on, on Davis and Whitaker now in tight quarters does well and well done from uh, Meg Cray there to shut down the, the through ball back to Diaz. And yeah, so substitute there in the, in the nine shirt for Tech Tab Seaton, who's been in brilliant form in recent weeks and uh, often getting the getting the, the praise of her coach Craig Johnston. Um, just again showing the great depth that they have in the squad at Tech. Chantel Smith given a wee bit of time to look up. You don't want to give her too much time. Diaz then drops it back to Whitaker. Again, she's well hounded, and that's brilliantly done. Might have been Beth Elliott there, done a great job of winning it back and trying to turn it into a counter. Rose Morton then does her own mopping up and finds Diaz in a bit of space, but the offside flag goes up. Is that the first offside this evening? Um, I can't recall the flag going up too many times, which is a bit of a surprise with the, both teams Pressing their defence is fairly high up the pitch as well. It's been a really good 
uh, flowing match, great flow to the game. Hope you're enjoying the, the coverage. Brilliant to be able to bring your football from the from the deep south, and I'm sure there'd be people right across the country that, in particular, would be uh, pretty curious to see this tech side in action, given how successful they've been. Diaz can't keep that one in. This is cut out by Kelsey Kennard, but Beth Elliott will get it back. A little bit hopeful that ball. She did have a couple of teammates in attack, but Jess Marvin, uh, oh sorry, Jasmine Prince in the 10 shirt there. Be a wee bit frustrated that she couldn't get the ball to feet. And now Ruby Anderson driving forward for Tech down that right flank. And uh, again, Simmers deals with it pretty easily. Pia Davis knocks it back nicely there. Cray, that's a good ball. Looking for the feet of Prince, but didn't quite drop her away. Still 3-0 here to Dunedin Tech, the score we had at half-time. Two goals to Neve Collin, one penalty to Chelsea Whitaker, giving them their 3 0 lead. We might be seeing a substitution here with Neve Collin, the, the 10 for, for Tech, coming off. Great performance, two goals. And really should be wearing my glasses. Come on, Morgan, what were you thinking? Um, but I imagine that that'll be. Georgia Kennedy, who, um, who may have come on in the in the 17 shirt for, for Tech, because she's bound to make an appearance at some point. Here's as well, cut out by Diaz. But again, brilliant keeping from Simmers there to dive down at the feet of, of Diaz and, and, and deal to that. There's Uni now, they've got a few players forward here and might be Tony Power now pushing forward a bit more, we were more used to seeing her and um, Davis just couldn't quite open up for a shot there. Ruby Anderson's coming out this left hand side now and she finds Diaz. She takes on a defender, cuts it across, can't find Morrison, awkward bouncing ball there, and Chelsea Whitaker can't quite connect with that one and will be a goal kick. University now trying to build another attack. Comes out to Cray, but Anderson tries to shut her down, but nicely worked triangle there with Beth Elliott, and Cray gets it back. Looks up, but Kennard cuts that one out. And Hannah Mackay Wright gets it again. Some decent pressure on her, but Tech clever at getting out of those situations. Rose Morton, well, they've done well again here, Uni, and it's Davis who, unfortunately, it's a tame effort on goal. It will go down as a shot on target, but it was very easily dealt with by, by Patterson. But again, there's just a, a wee bit of hope there for Uni that if they can claw a goal back... Canard cuts it out again, but Elliot 
Done well in there, but now Whitaker looks up. Can't quite find a pass, but tried to find Anderson there. Another substitution here, and Pia Davis has had a, had a good game up on attack, been really busy for university, but she makes way now. Could probably uh, toss a coin to, uh, to tell you which of the subs is coming on for university. So I don't have uh, great numbers on the bench there. There's uh, Smith now on, on the ball. One's out with a tussle and thumps a shot at goal, but doesn't quite get the con connection she wants, so just be a goal kick. There's another chance here, Morrison. It's on the edge of the box, but a couple of defenders do just enough there. Will be another corner, though. Tech will look to turn the screw here. Beautifully calm night here down at Logan Park. Swung in, Hannah Mackay Wright couldn't quite get on the end of it. The shot came in there, might have been Ruby Anderson, but um, comfortable enough save for, for Simmer. She'll be pleased it was almost straight to her. <laughs> Whitaker gets her head on that. Might have lost it in the lights, we'll, uh, we'll let her away with that one. As Emily Morrison does well, but can't quite find Diaz. Diaz will be hunting for a goal. She's scored plenty this season, hasn't quite managed to do so yet tonight. Yeah, so 17 on the ball there for Dunedin Tech. Young Georgia Kennedy. Absolute star in the making and uh, just showing the, the depth there with Dunedin Tech. I think she's the, the youngest member of their squad today and I think she only just turned 16. Student at, at, at Kavner and his tech come forward through Morrison and she's got Dez in support but she goes herself and what a great finish from Emily Morrison. Well she's been scoring goals with uh, finishes like that for, for a few years now. Absolute class, has done it plenty of times in the National League. She's done it here to uh, increase the lead for Dunedin Tech to 4-0 over Otago University. And, well, it's going to be tough for Huni to try and get anything out of this now, which, uh, which is a shame because they've, they've uh, competed pretty well. But, geez, what a classy finish from Emily Morrison. Uni will keep, keep doing what they've been doing all game. There's Tony Power trying to spark something for, for Uni. Throw comes in, awkward bounce, and Canard can only slice it clear. It'll be a corner for Uni. Oh, 
Lizzie Ellis, I think, will be the one to, to send this in. Can they pull one back here? Tech have just uh, kept churning out the results all season with some, some brilliant wins, scoring plenty of goals. Don't know if they've kept too many clean sheets of late, though, so they'll be desperate to do that in, in this clash. Can Uni pull one back? The corner will come in. Comes out and it's nicely dealt with by Chantel Smith. And T is just about. Gets on the end of that one, but goes all the way back to Simmers and Gold. Finds Cray, but she's under pressure from Chantel Smith. He gets her foot in. Yeah, I was saying earlier, so the, the substitute for Dunedin Tech, Georgia Kennedy, um, been recently selected for New Zealand Football Women's Under-17 Identification Camp, um, which is coming up. Great to see some Southern representation in that. Um, I know Saffron here from up at Rosal Carey, also uh, part of that as well. So fantastic to see that some of the talented youngsters from the region are getting noticed and getting recognised. There's Uni <laughs> come forward here and look to get across him, but just can't quite uh, find a teammate in, in the box there. Nicely mopped up here by Emily Morrison, the striker, working all the way back towards her own box. And now Whitaker only has Diaz in front of her. But now gets an overlapping run. And that might be uh, Kennedy, who's just a, a wonderful player on the ball. You'd like to see her uh, take on defenders like that. So we're about to get another substitution here for Dunedin Tech and it's Emily Morrison getting uh, congratulated by her teammates there as she goes off the field after uh, scoring that fourth goal for Tech just a few moments ago and gets a pat on the back from coach Craig Johnson as well put in a great shift and Coming on, another youngster, another one of these uh, super talented youngsters for Dunedin Tech, 17-year-old Anika Itadani. Spoilt for choice to be able to bring on uh, players like this. It's Canard. Um, well, Kennedy may be the Youngest player in the squad, I think it might be uh, Kelsey, who might be the, the most senior. Must be nearing uh, 200 games for Dunedin Tech. Here she is again. Nicely knocks it back to a goalkeeper, who then plays it across to Hannah Mackay Wright. Another player that's uh, represented New Zealand at, uh, at youth levels including, I think it was the Under-17 World Cup in 2018 where New Zealand performed so well. It's her on the ball again. As she got the ball back from Rose Morton, another one who's represented New Zealand at Under-17 and Under-20 level. Ruby Anderson has a bit of space, so turns, looks up and sees a few teammates. And she spreads it across to Kennedy, who's charging down, but it's a little bit of an aimless touch there, unfortunately. Simmers just tries to calm it down. And ball allowed to bounce. Jasmine Prince, again, has worked really hard for uni. Whitaker now on the halfway line looking to find Diaz and here she goes but great defending again it will be a corner for Tech but 
great defending there to uh, not allow Diaz any space to get a get towards goal there. And I think the temperature has just gone up, up a notch. Might be three degrees now. There's a, a nice crowd that's that's made its way down to Logan Park here tonight, Friday night match. It's another corner here for Dunedin Tech. You can see Forsyth Bar Stadium there in the background. Comes in, it's a great corner. It's not dealt with, there's a scramble in the goal. And Uni have just about got it clear, and they do. They'll be pleased to see that one clear. Of course, uh, Dunedin, fortunate enough to be a host city in the uh, Women's World Cup coming up in a couple of years with games to be at Forsyth Bar Stadium there under the roof. And of course, we've got the turf facility here right across the road. Brilliant setup we've got. As Tech keep pushing, trying to add to their lead, 4-0 up as it stands. Next time I do this, uh, I need to remind myself to bring some gloves so I can barely hold the, the microphone, it's that chilly. Players aren't letting the cold conditions show at all as Rose Morden can't quite uh, spread it across to a teammate there and Uni come forward again. And ball, oh, well, it's a great experience defending there from Kelsey Canard who did well to come across and tidy up and cut out what was an encouraging attack there for Uni. And now Whitaker pouncing on the ball. Lays it across, oh, but the offside flag goes up against Diaz, who's a bit frustrated there, because that would have been a great chance. Once again, a big, big shout-out to New Zealand football for helping to bring this Kate Shepard Cup round three fixture all the way from uh, the chilly south in Dunedin but bring it to people across the country across the world via YouTube brilliant platform for streaming games like this Do make sure you subscribe to the New Zealand Football YouTube channel as well because there's uh, regularly games from across the country that are getting streamed. As you could hear the tech coach Craig Johnston there, pretty pleased with the way that his team just won the ball back there and tried to reset themselves. There's such a determined focus from tech. It doesn't matter what the scoreline is, they'll just keep doing what they do so well as uh, Diaz can't quite combine with her teammate there University. Turn it over again and nicely done there by Rose Morton. Canard looks up and plays it back to Morton. Ruby Anderson over here on the left hand touchline and acres of space just would be screaming out for it but doesn't want to give away to her opponents that she's in so much space.
again Tech will look to go backwards before they go forwards and Patterson sees a couple of university shirts coming towards her so it does go long and this is where Uni have done a good job of trying to put a bit of pressure on and Meg Cray does well there and good pressure but Ruby Anderson just caught there by her opponent no hard feelings just a bit of a coming together and Tech take the free kick short Chantel Smith sprays it out to the sideline so good with those raking balls The game uh, starts winding down a bit, I guess, but uh, really enjoyed bringing this game to you. It's been, uh, been a good quality game of footy. As Kennard finds Smith, Tech want one more, but Diaz can't quite get on the end of that, and Simmers mops up. Simmers has been tidy. Unfortunately, uh, conceded a, a penalty late in that first half but otherwise has uh, had a really fine game for uni goes all the way back to the keeper again Look at this from Uni, they're still really trying to play some, some good footy. Now they launch it forward and... Jeez, it, um, Patterson did well to come to the edge of the box and got it clear, but again was under pressure, might have been from, from Prince there. time on the ball there and as she does looks up finds a teammate and Tiaz who once again tries a tries a turn but they haven't made it easy for her they obviously she's been highlighted as a as a threat and Diaz just hasn't been given a lot of space in those situations but now Smith out near the flank and she fires in across and anything could happen there Ball goes all the way through and might just be a goal kick. This game certainly winds down now. Rose Morton just about wins the contest there in the middle of the park, but I think Beth Elliott there for Uni has done well. And here goes Tony Power for University. She's got a couple of teammates with her too. And here's a chance. And the shot was on target, but just not enough power to really trouble Patterson. It was straight at her, but great football there from, from Uni. As it just starts raining now to, to cap the night off. And don't see the offside flag go up. And Diaz has got on the end of it. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. But the shot was straight at Simmers and oh, frustrating there for, for Diaz. Thought she might have finally got that goal, but Simmers did well. Just been really brave today. Whitaker with another through ball. Tech still desperate for another goal. It went just behind Ruby Anderson, but it's come back for Itadani and now. Anderson lays it back. Chelsea Whitaker. Oh, what a finish. 
What a finish. Scores so many goals. She got one from the penalty spot in late in the first half. And then a heck of a strike here from the edge of the box. Left foot, I think it was. And that's Tech's fifth of the night. What a strike. Chelsea Whitaker, what a player. One of the heroes of their 2018 Kate Shepherd Cup victory. She brought up her 150th appearance for Tech in their round one Kate Shepherd Cup clash with Rosamond Carey. There's a uh, good clash there in uni. Can they still get something out of this? Meg Cray. Rose Morden. Tabitha Seaton there. I can't find a teammate that's cut out. Uni with a chance here to try and create something late on. <laughs> Tech aren't going to give up trying to score either. And again, Diaz is going to be getting towards the end of this. It's cleared back towards Simmers who can't pick it up and does well to tidy up. Uni still forcing uh, Kennard to be alert there to cut that one out. And as uh, Craig clips heels there with Ruby Anderson, no foul given. <laughs> Hasn't been too many fouls today. Alice uh, Clipson's done a wonderful job with the, with the whistle. It's just kept the game flowing. And it's been a really enjoyable game to, to watch and to, and to bring to you on this uh, YouTube live stream. Thanks to New Zealand football. Uni still getting players forward, trying to create something, but Chantel Smith will try and take advantage of that. And the ball comes out to Ruby Anderson. She eyes up the goal in front of her. And just a wee toe poke there. It's clever, but back onto her right foot and just pokes it past a helpless Simmers and I think that makes it six. Six nil now to Dunedin Tech. Just a few minutes to play, I think. And well, Uni might feel a little bit hard done by to see the score blow out to this, but this is what Dunedin Tech do. They just uh, so much quality that they just keep coming at you. And we heard. The university coach, Stu Moffat, say that, yes, you know, Tech <laughs> score plenty of goals early in their games, but they also get a lot just before half-time, just after half-time and late on. They're unrelenting. The full-time whistle is blown by referee Alice Clipsom and Dunedin Tech finish up with a convincing 6-0 win over Otago Uni in uh, what's been a really good game of football. It's been great fun to bring it to you on this very chilly Friday night here in Dunedin thanks for uh, catching the stream and I understand that we've got uh, highlights of, uh, of the goals that, that, that we can bring to you so stick around for that, thank you for joining us for the stream my name's Morgan Jarvis it's been a pleasure to help bring this uh, to, to, to viewers Make sure you subscribe to the New Zealand Football Channel for any upcoming fixtures that are being streamed. Thanks.